I'm going to teach you how to kill bloodletters in the mist. I will do this by explaining the underlying ideas and strategies that took me from pretty much avoiding all bloodletters and double bladeds to excitedly running towards most of them when I see them in the mist. Buckle up and welcome to PvP Academy. Every PvP fight is divided into brawling phases and kiting phases. Whoever has the mobility advantage has more power to decide which of the phases will happen when. Having an overwhelming mobility advantage lets you do two things. If you think you're winning, you can force a trade and kill the other person. If you think you're losing, you can space away and fully disengage or reset the fight. On the screen right now, you can see me beating a higher IP Pike player with one eye closed. It's not because I am a better player than him or that I'm somehow outplaying him necessarily. It's just because his boots are on shield charge. He has no sprint and so I can just win the trade and then hang around close enough until my E is ready again. At any point, if I felt that he was actually winning this fight, I could just click my boots, use my auto run key and tab out to start choosing next song on Spotify. This is an extreme example, but it's also what most fights feel like for bloodletters and double bladed. They get to decide if you brawl or if you kite. When they are winning, they can force a brawl on their terms. When they are losing, they can just disengage from the fight. To counter that, we want to trick them into making the wrong decision. And when they do engage for a brawl, we need to find ways to use our build to win the trade. Remember the point about tricking your opponent because we will come back to it later in the video. For now, let's check out the first fight. Both builds are really standard here. Note that the enemy does have over a 200 average IP advantage but my build is extremely well optimized for being pretty much the strongest I can be at this average IP. If you'd like to know more about this, check out my video on item power. So what do we expect from this fight? Despite being outgeared, my build here is better at brawling. So if we just stand and hit each other until one person dies, I should win this. However, the blood letter has an overwhelming mobility and cooldown advantage over me. The plan for the blood letter should be to use that advantage by trading with me when they have stalker jacket active, then kiting me until their stalker jacket is ready again, which will be ready way before I have my inferno shield again, and then coming in for the second brawl and potentially killing me off the top of that. Let's see if that's what happens. What are the most important things that you are noticing here? They still have not used their stalker jacket. This is because he knows that I have Inferno Shield and he is hoping that I will use it during just a trade and then he will be able to kite it out and come back and then use his stalker jacket. In my opinion, in PvP, any strategy that relies on your opponent making significant mistakes is a bad strategy. And this is a good illustration. So far, I have completely negated his mobility and cooldown advantage, and this is not by some genius outplay on my part, the only thing that I've done for that is just simply not click my Inferno Shield. The Bloodletter player is outplaying himself. Both of our HP is getting lower and so it is more likely that if we do brawl now this will be the last brawl of the fight. Okay, so finally now there is the Stalker Jacket but it might be too late. I can just click my Inferno Shield and just brawl. There's two points to notice here. Number one is that my build is better at brawling as I mentioned before. So when we both have our jackets ready, I am happy to do this. But there is one more very important thing going on here. Remember how we just talked about how a mobility advantage gives you a choice to pretty much just leave the fight if you think you're losing. And so when we are fighting these double bladed and blood letters, we always want to make it seem to them like they are winning. We need to be able to bait them in with a carrot because we don't have a long enough stick to catch them with. The general principle of doing this is to try to backload anything you can. In my case, my big damage comes at the end. I keep my WE and helmet for the big execute. If I just click my spells the moment they're ready, there is no way this bloodletter would hang around long enough to die. So take a moment to think about your personal build and figure out what are the things that you could backload in order to create that big power spike at the end of the fight instead of 
scaring away your opponent. Notice also that in this fight I use a poison potion, even though it does about 150 damage less than the HP I would get from eating a healing potion. But this is part of the same backloaded executing strategy to keep my opponent interested until it's too late. By the way, this is also the reason why it is actually often easier to kill higher IP blood letters because simply the fact that you have this big IP difference functions a bit as a bait in and of itself. Next, let's check out the fight where the Bloodletter actually does use their Stalker Jacket. This Bloodletter's approach is correct. He used everything he had, including his E, to try to win the first brawl, and his plan now is to kite me until his Stalker Jacket is ready again. Luckily for me, however, since I'm able to hit my E and W here, I do actually win this trade. This moment here is the most crucial moment in this fight. What do you think I should do here? To follow him and keep hitting him or to turn away and start spacing away from him? There is no easy clear solution here. This is a good example of why Bloodletter is so popular. Both of my choices are kind of bad. If I follow him, I have everything on cooldown and I risk just simply dying because his stalker jacket is just about to be ready. If I turn away from him, I give him a free chance to just run away and reset. I do some split second calculations here and decide to risk him getting away rather than risk dying to him. And so I do not force another brawl and instead keep maintaining the space between us. Most Bloodletter players here would probably choose to take this opportunity and just run away because I won the first trade by perhaps a little bit too much. But this is a good experienced player and he knows that he has a big cooldown advantage and he has a chance to kill me. Let's see how it goes. This was an extremely close fight. Note that this blood leather played well and managed to use all of their spells and items at least twice during the fight, while my infernal shield was still on cooldown until the very end from that original brawl. While I am hopelessly out-mobilityed by Bloodletters or Double Bladeds, my spear build still has pretty decent mobility. For example, I was able to E out of his second Stalker Jacket to avoid a couple seconds of the damage. If your build has less mobility and spacing tools, you need to focus even more on mastering the art of baiting your opponent in for that final brawl that you think they will lose. Now check out the fight where I don't win the first trade. The IP disadvantage is nothing new, but this time the enemy has a strong awakened weapon and they are smarter with their build. They have prioritized upgrading their stalker jacket above all other items. The opponent uses their stalker jacket to dismount me and I make a very common beginner mistake. I press my inferno shield even though their stalker jacket is actually already ending. And we are in a similar situation as last fight, he is kiting me until his stalker jacket is ready again, except this time I did not win the first trade at all. He does a good job staying just far enough to avoid a brawl, but close enough to be ready to jump in once his cooldowns are back. I cannot space enough to buy time for my inferno shield, so I have to eat his stalker jacket. However, did you see what he just did? He used his E to close the gap. If I had realized this during the fight, I would have just stood my ground and brawled until the end. Unfortunately, I only noticed this later when I was watching the recording and during the fight itself, my only thought was to somehow miraculously dodge his E execute. Without E, he cannot kill me and he cannot get far enough away from me, so I have a very good chance of winning this fight. Overall, this fight is a good example. It's very easy to just write it off as Bloodletter being the OP meta weapon or enemy abusing IP advantage and awakened weapons, but after seeing all these previous fights, you and I both know that that's not the case. I lost this fight because I made two very big mistakes. If I had not wasted that first Inferno, or if I'd seen his E and stayed to trade, I'd have a very good chance to get myself a nice payday. Here's another fight that I start on a pretty big mistake. I dismount way too close to my enemy, so he's able to abuse my 5 second global cooldown. As a result, I lose the first trade. The rest of it should look very familiar to you. The Bloodletter player is trying to be just close enough to re-engage, but not too close as to force a brawl before their stalker jacket is ready. I am trying to buy enough time for my second Inferno shield so that I could take a brawl and potentially win the fight. 
He uses everything to try to catch up and I am able to E out to avoid his stalker jacket damage. At this point a good bloodletter player would continue kiting me to wait for the next stalker jacket cooldown. But this man is hungry and thinks that I am a chicken nugget so he uses his boots to try to catch up. This is a big mistake because I am now much stronger with my jacket being ready and his on cooldown. It looks like he does realize his mistake but it is too late. One last blood leather fight before we move on. Look at this picture and tell me how do I know that this is gonna be an easy fight. If you notice that he has low specs, that's kind of true but it does not mean the fight will be easy, it just means he has not played that much blood leather on EU. If you notice that he is using an omelette, that is indeed not a good choice for this fight. It's going to make him even weaker at brawling. But the answer I was looking for is that he is on Shadow Edge. This is a dead giveaway that he is not an experienced Bloodletter player. He does not have the dash, which would buff both his Stalker Jacket and his E. It also limits his mobility. He will not be able to do what the previous Bloodletters did, which is to kite me and keep me at just enough distance while waiting for their Stalker Jacket. And if I need to get away from him, I pretty much just need to dodge one of his shadow edges. If you paid attention to this fight, you saw that this bloodletter did pretty much everything wrong that they could have. The important thing to understand here is that you should like this video. And if you're watching this thinking that this is awesome, but how does this apply to other matchups which are not spear versus bloodletter, then let me show you. In fact, the underlying concepts and strategy that we have been talking about since the start of the video apply to all fights where one party has a significant mobility advantage over the other one. In this fight on the screen, I am the bloodletter. I'm not playing the bloodletter, but I am in the same overwhelming mobility advantage situation as my opponents from previous fights. So in this case, I get to decide when we brawl and when we fight. You can see this on the screen. I use my most important cooldowns to win the trade and then space just enough to buy time for them to be ready again. Now if you've been paying attention, you should know why this meatball here is a terrible mistake. Remember, this wildfire player is in the role that I was earlier against bloodletters. He needs to bait me in so that I commit to a bad trade and die. To do this, he needs to backload his most powerful items and spells. If he misses this E, it's pretty easy for me to just go in and kill him. But if he hits it, I'm in a very good position to just use my mobility advantage to disengage and not die. This wildfire is definitely strong enough to win this fight. The mistakes that really cost him this fight are both tactical. It's not that he missed his E, it's that he is giving me a big mobility advantage by insisting to use Wanderlust and that he's not backloading his important spells in order to bait me in. In fact, if we have to choose one skill that will have the biggest impact on how profitable you are in Mist's PvP, it is probably the skill of baiting. In fights against bloodletters, we focused mostly on how to do the biggest burst of damage at the end. But the big part of baiting is also managing your defensive resources. And even small things can contribute to a good bait. In the fight you are looking at right now, I knowingly choose not to drink my potion until the carving is already committed in for the final trade. This is a simple tactic to give him the illusion that he can win this fight. To start killing more meta builds in the mists, you should have a look at your build and figure out what are your best tools to bait. And by the way, remember that fight where I died to a bloodletter after making some pretty big mistakes myself. If you want to avoid that, then this video will give you some tools to optimize your mental performance for PvP.